All right, everyone, welcome back to Bee Mother Reviews. Today we've got from Handmade Object or HMO Collectibles the Warhammer 40k Robute Gilliman diorama. Now, I think it's pretty easy to see that Warhammer fans are going to be intrigued by this statue, but if you're like me and admittedly have never played the Warhammer tabletop game, is this statue still worth your interest? We'll find out in the review next. <music> All right, so the Warhammer Miniatures game has actually been around a long, long time now, well over 30 years. And a big premise of the game is that you have to assemble and paint your own collection. So you literally have to build your own army for the game. Now, I admit, as I said off the top, that I've never actually sat down to play the Miniatures game. But I can say with sincerity that the art style of Warhammer has always been a favorite of mine. I remember as a young kid, a cousin of mine had some of these figures. And I remember he painted them all up black and red. And I thought, oh my god. These things look incredible and I begged my mom to take me out and try and find some of these figures and we just never could. But that imagery has always stuck with me. I think a big reason why I love StarCraft so much and almost always would play as the Terrans in the game is that it reminded me of the Warhammer universe. And locally we have several of the game's workshops and I'll stop in there to buy some paint or paintbrushes once in a while. There's always a group of guys in there playing the game or building their models. So I'll stop and watch what they're doing. I'll browse the shelves and check out the display window. And it always takes me way longer to get in and out of that store than it ever should. But I have to hold myself back when it comes to this game because I know myself and I know that one or two figures would never be enough. I'd have to buy them all. So I've always just sort of been content to watch the game from the sidelines. But when HMO announced that they had the license for Warhammer statues, well, Warhammer statue, that's a different story. So without wasting any more time, let's dive into this beast right here. Let's start off with sculpt and design next. Okay, so this statue centers around one of the premier characters in the Warhammer universe, and that is Robute Gilliman, the Primarch of the Ultramarines. I mean, those are the elite of the elite fighters of the Warhammer universe. Now, one of the defining moments of his story is that he was actually killed in battle through an act of treachery by his own brother who slit his throat. Now, Instead of being laid to rest, his body was put into a stasis where it remained for tens of thousands of years until the technology was available to bring him back to life. Now this statue captures that exact moment where the homeworld of the Ultramarines is being invaded and the first of the infantry fodder is running up the stairs here. Now under normal circumstances, this dude right here would be a pretty intimidating sight. He's got the skull mask. He's got the gilded skull on his shoulder armor. you got the spiked boot. And for good measure, more skulls around his waist. He's got chains, a big spike on his gun, and this chainsaw-like serrated edge on his axe. I mean, this is a bad-looking dude. But over here, we've got this absolute mountain of a man in Gilliman. Now, not only does he have the high ground here, he is visibly bigger, stronger, and more powerful than this little guy over here. He's going to make short work of him. Now, this is the type of sculpt here that I don't even really know where to start with it. Uh, there's so much detail on it. His armor looks absolutely incredible. All the carved details on the armor, the eagles on his boots and his gauntlet. You've know, got the hand of Dominion here with his massive gun strapped to the side. The ammo belt feeding into it from his backpack. I mean, look at the details on here. you got the winged eagle on the back. you got this spiked iron halo over his head. Uh, you got the giant double eagle here on his right shoulder armor. Uh, it's just a fantastic looking piece. And then, of course, in his right hand, you have the flaming emperor's sword here. Uh, one minor complaint about the sculpt is his right hand it does look kind of tiny. Um, you know, it is supposed to look visibly smaller than this massive gauntlet that he's wearing, but it's just a little bit tinier than I think it should look. 
Now the rest of the statue is absolutely impeccable. Great portrait on him here. He looks mean. He looks angry. And you can see why because you can see that scar from ear to ear across his neck. He's just been awoken from the dead and he is angry. And you can tell just by looking at his face. It's an incredible sculpt here. There's so many details that, like I said, I don't know where to start. I hope some of the close-ups do some of the talking for me. Now, one of my favorite parts of this piece is the base. You have this ornate set of marble stairs with the carvings in it, the skulls, the candles, and that is just contrast heavily by the sides, which look high-tech with all of the conduit and wiring and things. It's just that Warhammer art style to a T. Really great job on this sculpt. Uh, fantastic work by the HMO team. I absolutely love it. So one of the things that I really appreciate about HMO is that they're always trying to one-up themselves. They're always trying to push the envelope from statue to statue and try and do something better than they did the last time around. And I think that is definitely apparent here in the paint job. I mean, just take one look at this piece. There's dozens and dozens of places where they could have screwed this up and they just didn't. I mean, I can't find a single speck of gold paint where it shouldn't be on this statue. They just did an amazing job with this gilded gold and blue armor. It looks incredible. There's battle damage all throughout his armor as well. You can see under all those scratches and gouges where they put a little bit of a, almost a rusted look there. It really gives him this aged, battle-worn look about him that just looks incredible. Uh, nice portrait as well. Nice skin tones. I will note that they've gone pretty heavy with uh, the darker area of his beard here. And that's not because of his beard. That's because they're trying to replicate this shadowed effect that his massive armor would cast over his face. And it helps enhance that intimidating look about his face as well. Uh, just a fantastic paint job on Gilliman. You know, the Chaos Marine, he looks pretty good as well. You've got the black and copper armored with a little bit of blood red mixed in there. He's really, really well done. And the base as well. They've done a really nice marble effect on the stairs. Again, the gold paint is done very, very well there. Uh, really just a great paint job overall. I mean, if there's one place where I could complain, it's the flaming effect on the sword. But, I mean, show me the statue that has the perfect flame effect. I haven't seen it yet. Fire is just almost impossible, it seems, to replicate with a painted finish. Um, and this statue is no different. It looks okay. Um, but, again, fire is just so hard to do. The rest of the statue, though, amazing. Looks fantastic. All right, so before we move on to production and build quality, you will notice that I've swapped out the portrait here. You can go with the helmeted look if you prefer to display it that way. Very cool alternate display, also sporting that Caesar-like wreath around his head. So you get two different portrait options for Gilliman on this piece. Now, this statue, as you can tell probably by looking at it, is fairly delicate, uh, lots of tiny pieces on it. So I have to give a special mention to the packaging. I think HMO has, you know, relative to the size of their statues, some of the biggest and heaviest boxes in the entire industry. And you're, you're actually thankful for it on this piece because there's a lot of tiny pieces and it arrived in perfect condition. And I understand that HMO has had almost no complaints about damage on this statue, which is no small feat. Now, as I mentioned, lots of tiny parts with this statue, so you do get an assembly guide. Uh, it's got photos detailing step-by-step -step how to put it together, and a mere 47 steps later, this is what you arrive at. And you know, with that many steps, I was surprised with actually how easy it went together. The only difficulty that I had was getting both of Gilliam's feet down all the way into the base. It was just a little bit of a tight fit. Other than that, the statue is pretty solid construction. Uh, most of the pieces fit in with magnets or metal pegs, and they feel nice and sturdy in place. The only place I would say be a little bit careful is the magnet under his right hand is a little bit loose. It's not 
it's not going to fall out or anything, but it's not the strongest magnet that I've ever seen. So the statue goes together really well. Um, I do have a couple things to note about it though. Um, I mentioned that I love the base on this piece, but there's two things about it that I have to note. Um, the skulls and candles you can tell were separate pieces and you can tell that clearly by some pretty large seams around those items on the base. Um, so it, not the best look for the piece, but overall, as I said, the whole thing looks really, really nice. The other thing to note is the sand effect on the base. This is real sand and what they do is they put an adhesive down there and cast the sand in place and let it dry. But on mine, I think they forgot to remove that excess sand. And when I opened it up, there was sand everywhere in the box. And so I actually had to vacuum out the shipper box after I had taken everything out and to vacuum the floor and everything to get rid of all that sand. So. I haven't seen anybody else complain about that, so I think it might be a one-off, but you might want to have your vacuum handy just in case. One other small thing to note is the horns on the crown here. Uh, we're a little curved and wavy on mine, so I had to get out the trusty hair dryer to straighten those out, and it didn't take much effort. They straightened up pretty nicely. So other than those few things that I noted, I think it's a really nice quality production from HMO, great packaging, and just an overall great looking product. All right, it's time to wrap up this review of the Warhammer 40K Gilliman diorama from HMO. And I think, you know, the sculpt on this statue is absolutely insane. It's one of the most intricate sculpts that I've seen in a long, long time. It has an incredible paint job and it's just an overall nice quality product. If you're a big time Warhammer fan, I think it's a no brainer. You gotta find a way to get this beast onto your shelves. Now, if you're like me and you've just been intrigued by Warhammer over the years, I think it works for you too because it allows you to appreciate the awesome art style of Warhammer without investing all the time and energy in building and painting your own figures. Um, so as I said, I think this statue works for everybody. HMO plus Warhammer, I think it's a win. They have a second piece in the series now up for pre-order, the Logan Grimnar, which looks absolutely incredible. So keep an eye out for that. Stay tuned to the channel because we have lots more reviews coming. Make sure to subscribe. And we'll talk to you guys soon.